We have some news here from Marseille at the meeting. Um, it's a hot topic that, in fact, a couple of compounds have been approved. First of all, uh, TVEC. Tell me about TVEC. That's hot off the press, isn't it? What's the significance of TVEC being approved by the FDA? Yeah, it's a, it's a viral-based vaccine, TVEC, which can be used intralesionally for patients. And it's stimulating GMCSF, and, uh, which is an immunomodulatory uh, cytokine. And uh, it's leading to regression of the injected lesions, but also non-injected lesions. And the FDA very recently approved TVEC as an agent for uh, uh, non-resectable stage 3 disease and stage 4 disease. And in Europe this week, you know, the CHMP committee of the EMA was releasing uh, a press note which is saying that uh, it's a positive opinion for TVEC in Europe as well. But this will be restricted to patients with just stage 3 disease, which is unresectable in stage 4, so-called M1A category. So they don't want to see patients with lung, liver, bone and brain mets. Uh, it's a patient with limited disease to a soft tissue. Right, now this is early therapy, isn't it? It is very early therapy, so it will be approved for first-line treatment. This is what the data are saying. And I think it's good news because we have another player on the market, but another effectful agent on the market. How do you see it being added to the other therapies, the targeted therapies and the immune therapies? Yeah, you know, I don't think that there's so much competition because TVEC is more or less filling a gap. So it's a gap of the lesions from stage 3 disease, which is unresectable, and M1A. So if you have huge tumor volumes, you have tan lung meds, you know, plus liver meds, and the patients are carrying a BRAF mutation, it's a good candidate for BRAF and MEK inhibition or for PD-1 antibody. So this was never in the past a good candidate for a TVEC injection. And you need to have injectable sites, which means injectable metastases in the skin or in the lymph nodes. So you need to have some prerequisites, which is excluding some patients from the use. So which patients will you be using it for? I would use it for non-resectable soft tissue metastases. If these patients have otherwise no organ infiltration, which means uh, stage B and C of the M1 category. Now we're also seeing a license for adjuvant ipilimumab. Now that's quite different from the way it has been used yeah. so far, or licensed so far. What do you reckon about that? Yeah, that's, that was a bit of a surprise for me. I don't know if the FDA who approved the agent today, you know, have seen data which I have not seen. So the latest data I have seen is a 10% difference in disease-free survival of high-dose ipilimumab compared to observation alone, which means placebo infusions. And this ipilimumab was given in a dose of 10 mix per kick. And you know, the approved uh, regimen is 3 mix per kick, so it's more than tripling the dose. Plus, it's not given for just four cycles in a three months period, it's given for three years now. So it's a much higher dose, given for a much longer time, or significantly longer time, and there is some toxicity. So, you know, the outweigh of, let's say, uh, effect in terms of clinical benefits and the toxicity is somewhat critical. And will you be using it in that role? I will not immediately use it, even if it is approved in Europe, because I believe it's toxic. And also, we need to discuss for this agent the price. Because, I mean, ipilimumab is not a cheap treatment, and we are giving it for just four cycles. If we need to give it for a total of three years, I would love to see differences which are larger than 10% in disease-free survival. I would love to see overall survival differences. And in addition, you know, we need to have a good management of the toxicity. Thank you.